So the company behind the technology that's powering Crackdown 3 and giving power to the cloud says that they think that once developers see this technology, once gamers feel this technology and get to play on it, that not only are more games going to take advantage of it, but in fact, the games not taking advantage of the cloud are going to be in the minority, which is a pretty strong statement. He says this tech gives virtually unlimited compute power to games and is going to give rise to dynamic worlds that would never be possible on your local machine, no matter how expensive or beefy your PC is. So here's what the CEO of CloudGen says, quote, we believe in the not too distant future, the core games that aren't cloud assisted will be in the minority. It's true that developing with distributed computing paradigms is complex and requires skills not commonly found within the game industry. But we started CloudGen with a specific goal of making the transition as smooth as possible. And we're achieving this by cloud enabling well-known and understood game engines and middleware solutions such as Unreal Engine 4, Havoc Physics, and NVIDIA Physics X to work in a distributed environment with no additional effort for the developers. So what he's saying is that these tools, this cloud technology is built right into the systems that developers are already using today. It's built into Havoc Unreal Engine 4 so that developers can just continue to build the games that they're already familiar with in the way that they build games now. And so they're not going to have to take, you know, a bunch of programming classes to learn how to use this technology. It's doing it all on its own in the background with the systems and tools. So he continues, CloudGen began as a project we started in early 2013. After a long research phase on the state of the art and distributed computing, we set an ambitious goal to create a development platform based on grid computing paradigms capable of delivering a virtually unlimited amount of compute power to craft game experiences never seen before. From the initial reaction to the Crackdown 3 demo at Gamescom, I'd say we're on the right track. So, if this turns out half as good as what it sounds, then, I mean, it really does appear to be something that could truly be innovative and revolutionary within gaming, because CPU limits a lot of what you can do in-game. So if you're able to remove that barrier, I mean, it opens up all sorts of possibilities. I remember back in the day whenever Peter Moylan was given false advertisement for Fable and he was talking about how in this world, you know, we were going to have uh, basically a, a living world so that it grew old. So you could cut down a tree, go back, you know, years later in game and there'd be a stump there or that you would grow old in game and, you know, things that would happen to you. If you got scars, you know, they would stay with you and, and so forth. So Fable never got to that point. But if you had a game that basically had unlimited CPU power, that it could save all that information that's happening in game, then this really could set up worlds that, I mean, we've never seen before within the gaming realm. So I think that's why the technology is exciting and also something to look forward to simply because, I mean, we don't have to buy anything new, right? Uh, it's all happening on the back end. And I know a lot of people are skeptical about this. And look, I, I always tell you to question everything. So it's healthy to be skeptical. Uh, I've been paying attention to this, you know, type of technology. We've been talking about it literally for years. So everything that I've seen, it, it just doesn't appear that far-fetched. You know, I don't think we're going to have to wait 20 years before we get a hold of this. But let me play devil's advocate for a moment because... Of course, the CEO of a company is going to tell you how amazing their technology and company is. And I'll tell you what the concerning part is for me, because there's always pros and there's always cons. And part of it goes back to what Xbox originally tried to promote with their launch, which is an always online connection in order to play a game. And of course, if you're trying to play a game that's using this technology, you're going to have to be connected to the internet. You're going to have to be talking to these servers in order to take advantage of it. So from a corporate standpoint, if you want to, you know, implement the ultimate DRM, I mean, what better way to do it than to make people connect to your server in order to play. But also just the other day, I'm afraid that that more games are going to use an always online connection that don't really need it, you know? Uh, I was in a beta the other day, pretty strict NDA, so I can't tell you what game it was, but I will tell you that it was in a genre that 
I've never seen before need an always online connection, yet this game requires it. And there were a few times where I tried to log in and play and the servers were down and therefore I, I couldn't play. And that is pretty damn annoying, especially from a game that I never felt in the first place needed to be always connected. And another thing, you know, look at all these ISPs. Uh, whenever you start talking about ISPs, there's few corporations that are as evil and greedy as these people are, and they're getting more ballsy with things like placing caps on people. And something else that has to be considered for people is how much data this is going to use when you're sitting there and you're used to playing all day long uh, while talking on these servers. Uh, now, we already know in games like Crackdown, it's not going to require a strong connection. In fact, it's going to require less of a connection than what you need to play Netflix um, or to stream a movie. So you're not streaming the entire game. It's just a portion of it. So it may not you know, be much at all. But that is something that you know, could possibly be something uh, for some to talk about and to worry about if they have a pretty strict data cap. Thankfully, my ISP doesn't have a camp, and if they decide to put one up, then I'll be joining another ISP, uh, just for the principle of it, even if I'm not going to hit the cap. Um, I don't even think I use that much data anyway, but I think it's a dirty practice uh, that some of the big players in the ISP field are definitely going towards. And on the flip side of that, I mean, you could also argue most games that we play anyway already require an online connection. If you play multiplayer-focused games, hey... You're playing on an online server, and you're not going to be playing if the servers or your internet is down. So there's obviously some positive and negative ways to look at this. Uh, I'm not sure that I like the idea that the minority of games uh, are going to be played offline in the future on your local machine. But at the same time, I also find it exciting what this tech can bring to the table because it's something new and something pretty revolutionary. And we're always complaining about wanting innovation. And it looks like this is innovation within our grasp. Uh, fully destructible environments, living and breathing worlds. And of course, this is going to be something not just for the Xbox. Uh, I mean, Xbox isn't the only one that connects to the internet. So PC and others would be able to use this technology as well. And there are other companies already looking at this, uh, Amazon and, and several others. So I think it's an exciting time to be a gamer. Post below, what do you think about the power of the cloud? Are you listening? Damn.